part of the major remodel. We've installed hardwood, 1,750 feet of it. Nailed down hardwood or any hardwood is not really that difficult. As long as you follow a few rules, you'll have good results. Open up the material and pull out the uh, directions or the cut sheet, and I look over their specifications. It's typically the same from product to product, but I want to find out if they've got any particular requirements. You want to make sure you're covered. You want to make sure that if there's a problem with it, that you've done everything possible on your side and everything that their specifications and their re uh, warranty requirements are. As we make sure that the wood is delivered and on site in the environment or in the conditioned space that it's going to be installed for a minimum of 72 hours. Take a moisture meter, and that's a moisture meter with the pins, the kind that you drive into the wood. The surface meters, they work good for a lot of things, but they don't meet the warranty requirement. I checked the subfloor in multiple locations throughout the house. As I did those tests, I took my camera phone, my iPhone, and I took pictures of the moisture meter reading. So that showed the moisture meter and it showed the location. And then I took the product, I opened up a few boxes, and I pulled out a random selection and I tested that. Different moisture requirements in your region and on the product may vary, but generally speaking, if the uh, subfloor and the material you're putting in are within 4%, then you're not going to have any trouble. If that's not the case, if you're not meeting the requirements, you want to wait. You want to let the product climatize and the environment dry out. Some of the laminated products, um, look at their specifications. You may need less uh, time on site, but again, it doesn't hurt to have it on site longer than the requirement. The more balanced the product is with its environment, the less chance you're going to have of, of uh, expansion, contraction, getting bolt buckling before pulling up, maybe creaking because the nails have pulled up a little bit. All the problems, the callbacks that you don't want to get. The next thing you want to do is plan your layout, particularly laying tile and laying hardwood. Figure out where you're going to finish and work your way backwards. If you do that, if you know where you're going to end up and you work your way backwards, you can plan uh, any adjustments you need to make. You don't want to start on one end and go to the other and find out that the walls aren't square and you're going to have a big taper, whether that's in tile or hardwood. It's, it's really visual. Because this is finished and because this is what your clients are going to see every day, it doesn't matter what the framer did, it doesn't matter what the drywaller did, it's not their fault. As the finished guy, the guy putting in the hardwood, the tile, the trim, all the things that are visible, it's your job to make things look like they're square to make sure they look like they're level. And sometimes you have to put things in a little out of square to make things look like they're square. In this case, the joists all ran long ways, which meant I had to run the hardwood uh, across a short distance. And that introduces a little more difficulty for the hardwood install because that means there's a lot more distance for the hardwood to get out. And it doesn't take very much per row for you to all of a sudden to be way off. I have found to be the most productive uh, way, the quickest way, and also the way to reduce your problems is to go to an important part of the house, the middle of the house, as close to the middle as possible. In my case, I've got the entryway here, which is sort of middle. If I went to the middle there and got that first row lined up, squared off the walls, coming from both ways, I could find out if things were out of square. And it's simply pulling a tape measure. The line doesn't have to be you know, on a layout of wood. It's just finding that center point or that important point. And in my case, if you can see the entry over here, about the middle of the door, that would have been a good place to put a line and then go both ways with the hardwood. By doing so, you automatically cut your um, ability to get out of alignment in half because you're going half this way and half that way. And what you do is you'd snap that line, you'd measure off major walls to the line at multiple locations both ways and find out if that line needs to be adjusted to square up with walls that may not be square. And again, you can't make it perfect, but you can make slight adjustments and really fix a lot of problems. Two by four could be th uh, th uh, three quarter plywood, anything good and rigid, and put it right on that line and screw it down a lot, uh, you know, every eight inches. 
into the subfloor so that it's good and hard. It won't eat budge at all because when you put in the hardwood, particularly a nail down like this, you're going to be driving it into it. And you don't want to move that starting point. I've got the starting point. I've got uh, four or five boxes open, the wood pulled out, kind of mixed, uh, mixed up. And then I start my layout and I nail that first row. And then I nail the second row, the third row, the fourth row, the fifth row, probably, you know, four to six rows. And then if, then that section's gonna be solid, it's gonna have a lot of nails in it, and it isn't gonna move. Then you can pull up the two by four or the three quarter ply or whatever your um, material that you use to start off of, you can pull that up. And then what you do is put a spline in. You can make a spline, or usually uh, when you order your hardwood, you can order a certain amount of spline. And uh, you'll put that spline in and turn the wood around and put the groove up against that and go the opposite direction, nailing back into it. So you'll be able to go both directions. If you've got a couple of installers, uh, you can both work in opposite directions, help each other when you need to, to move material around. But for the most part, you can be working in opposite directions and cover more territory. So I would have multiple lines snapped in both directions. And those are just reference lines. If you find that you are drifting a bit and you need to bring the other side back up, you can do that over a multiple rows and, and it becomes less visible. When I find that that's the situation, I um, take some razor blades out of, out of my razor knife and I put them with the sharp edge up, the, the, the back down, and set it right on the tongue and push the wood together. And I'll do that, you know, a couple of those. And I'll drive uh, the nails in, shoving the wood back up against that blade. The gap that it creates is, is from, from eye height standing up looking down is, is imperceptible. But you do that, leave those blades in, have some more blades. You need a package of those blades. I just find they're, you know, obviously they're, they're steel, so they're, you know, they're not going to compress at all. And um, it's, a, you know, it's something most likely you're going to have on the job with you anyway. And the only thing you have to do is be careful because you've got the sharp edge up. And I actually use pliers once I'm done to pull them out and put them back in the package or back in my knife. But I'll do that, and then the next row, I'll do another, leaving the first row of razor blades in. And you can use any kind of shim, as long as it's really thin. You can have some made up, you know, you can have a, um, you can go to a fab shop and have them make you up some little steel shims that are flat, and then you're not dealing with the, with the uh, edge of, the sharp edge of the razor blade. But I'll leave them in the first row, put them in the second row, drive that row in, and, and the reason I'll leave the first one in, even though it's nailed, is there's enough movement that when you're driving that second row, you could push that first row back tight and you lose the amount you're trying to gain. So I do that, you know, two or three rows, and then I would check my measurement, and if I'm back on, I'd stop if I need a little more to keep going. But again, it's a good way to just subtly bring it back and, you know, stay on your line so as you get to the other end, because that, that, you know, just with that razor knife, that's a tiny amount that you can't uh, perceive with your eyes from, from stand-up height, you can imagine just that little bit you wouldn't notice over the distance of 20 or 30 feet. You can be off a quarter inch, three-eighths of an inch, half an inch. So you want to watch for that and just keep checking. Again, very simple techniques, very, uh, and obviously the more you do it, the easier it's going to be to see problems and, and resolve them before you get there. And again, this is going back to what I said in the beginning. Realize where you're going to finish, keep checking to where you're going to finish, and stay on. Don't wait until you, you're within a foot of your finish point and find out, I'm off three quarters of an inch, or I'm off a quarter of an inch, and then end up with these tapers that you'll see run with the base, and they're very, very visible. And that's just, again, your, uh, as the finish guy, you're, you're putting down what your clients, what the public, what the people that are buying from you are going to see,